I do? Once I'm done with my Umrah and I want to do some sightseeing, where should I go? Right? So, and Alhamdulillah, and may Allah reward the ones who put these exhibitions together for us in Mecca and Medina both. There are so many amazing things you can see. There are so many amazing things or places you can visit. We know about, you know, Alhamdulillah, the, the Ghar of Thawr, and we know about the Ghar of Hira, right? The cave of Hira, where Rasulullah received his first revelation, where he would go and sit and do ibadah before he received prophethood. Remember that? So all of those places are there, alhamdulillah. So a lot of times your groups, if you're going with a group, they will take you there. But now alhamdulillah with visa relaxation, you can go on your own as well, right? And even if no one takes you, you can go on your own. And if you are young and healthy, try giving, um, you know, try giving it a go that you actually go and climb up to cave Hira. Then you will, you know, enjoy Sirah more. Then you, when you will come back or study Sirah, you will just love it even more because you have seen it. You will be able to relate. You will be able to understand the hardship. You will be able to understand where Rasulullah used to go to, you know, do ibadah and to ask for guidance. SubhanAllah. And he was worried about the state of his ummah, like his people at that time, not ummah, or like us, because he did not receive revelation back then. He was worried about the people around him, and he was not, he was not happy about the things they were involved in, the sins and the crimes. And he would uh, go to Cave Hira to, you know, contemplate, to ponder, to think of the solutions. So inshallah, these are the places we already know of from the Sira. But the exhibitions I was talking about, they're amazing. Now they have an exhibition to do with Sahaba in Mecca. It's not very far from Haram. You can walk there. It hardly takes you 10 minutes. Actually, not even 10 minutes. Depends on, um, you know, when you go and how hot is it. And if you're going around this time, December, January, it's the best time, alhamdulillah, like in terms of uh, weather for us. If you are going from North America, it's easier for, for you to go now because it's not, not too cold. And it's, you know, it's very pleasant during the day. and maybe a little chilly at night. But inshallah, in order to go to the exhibitions, you can just walk there. They're usually, they're actually free. They were free last time when we were there. So the Sahaba exhibition is amazing. It, it talks about, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, different um, like companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Their stories, they have videos going on. They have like um, different, you can say, uh, rooms, areas dedicated for different Sahaba. And Sahabiyat, you learn so much in that trip, subhanAllah. And if you get a guide, they usually have guides there and they have different, um, you know, they, uh, they guide you in different languages. And they have pretty much every language um, they can cater, alhamdulillah. So you will find one easily in English. If you can call them up or find out beforehand that what are the timings for English guide, then inshallah you can go at that time. Or if your group is taking you, please don't miss that time. And alhamdulillah, the groups usually they don't take you at Salah time. So you can go after Fajr, you have enough time before Zuhur, and they take you sometimes, uh, like you know, when you have enough time between two Salawat. So you can easily cover that. Okay, also in Medina, last time I remember there were three exhibitions, and they're right next to Masjid al Nabawi. They're different gates. Like if you just start um, taking a walk around Masjid al Nabawi, you will find one exhibition after the other starting off with the names of Allah exhibition. Beautiful, mind-blowing. Um, it will make you love Allah more, for sure. There's another one to do with Sirah. Uh, it's, it has the timelines, it has the models. The models are beautiful. They have the videos of the areas, places. Um, and Alhamdulillah, the third one is to do with the Quran. So inshallah, if you're going there, set a time, maybe every day after Fajr Salah, after your breakfast, and you know, set a time, take out an hour and a half, or maybe an hour is sometimes enough to, an hour or two hours, go there. Um, they allow you to take pictures in some, they don't allow you to take pictures in the others. So you know, follow the rules, whatever the rule is, you can do it. The Makkah one, they did not stop us from taking pictures or making videos within uh, the exhibition of Sahaba. But when we went for the, um, the Quran or the Mus'haf, uh, where the compilation and the different scriptures they were there they were not um 
you know, they were not allowing people, allowing people back then to take pictures. But inshallah, follow the rules. Whatever it says, just do that. Or the other, otherwise, just enjoy. Instead of just taking pictures, just enjoy that time. Try to remember as much as you can. And inshallah, whatever uh, is nice, you can take a note or make a note of that. Come back home. You can do research on it. And you may find pictures online anyways. All right. So these were to do with homework before you go. Make a plan for every day. Don't just go there and be lost. That, okay, what do I do now? And a lot of people, they do the homework of where to eat. Well, you know, everything is halal. So you don't have to do homework for that. Homework should be for your day plan that, okay, I'm going to go do this as well in this Umrah trip. While I'm there, might as well do that too, right? And also know about your uh, Umrah. That's the most important. That's the best homework you can do. Know the method before you go. Know that what am I required to do when I'm there? What is allowed? What is not allowed? What should I do? What should I not do? What's okay and what's not okay? Which is sunnah and which is, which part is sunnah and which part is wajib? Which part is okay and which part is not okay? So we need to know all of that. And inshallah, if you can read a book about it, amazing. If you can um, attend a session like this, alhamdulillah. If you're able to watch some videos about it, then please watch before you go. But make sure whatever you study, wherever you study from, you should have proofs. For every action you do, you should have a proof. Don't just say, I heard people saying that, that's why I do it. This is not knowledge. This is information. And information doesn't give you conviction. And information doesn't make you confident enough to perform your umrah. So inshallah, the goal should be that I am sure why am I doing this? I am sure why am I doing tawaf? I am sure it's written in the Quran or Sunnah. That's why I'm doing it, right? Inshallah. So that should be our goal. Alhamdulillah, there are many apps. And Alhamdulillah, Al Huda also made an app. It's, this app is in Urdu and English both. It is recently released. So it's called Hajjan Umrah, right? So you can, inshallah, search for it. And towards the end, I'm going to give you a link for our Telegram channel. If you're not on it already, <clears throat> we'll try to share the link of this app in that group so you can inshallah benefit from it. Otherwise, I'm going to give you the links at the end in the chat box as well, but at the end of the session today. So download this app. This app has all the steps that how to prepare for it, how to make the intention, what to say when you enter Makkah, what to say when you enter Masjid, what to say when you're performing Tawaf, how to do it, and you know, every step is there. So this makes life very easy. Yes, Sister Rashida, I'm going to give you the link towards the end. And company makes a big difference. Remember that. Even at Umrah, right? You know, sometimes we say, you know, we are all friends here. We are not so righteous religious here. But inshallah, we're going together. And we are going to maybe automatically become some amazing beings there. Inshallah, it is possible for sure. For sure. But if you can have some righteous friends around, if you have some, if you can have some not just apparently righteous, remember that. Righteousness, you cannot see. Righteousness is in the actions, all right? So if you have a friend who's always worried about, okay, where to eat next? And where to go shop next? Versus a friend, okay, when to go for haram, for another tabaf next? When to go and learn from a sheikh next? Which company would make your umrah better? Tell me, the first one or the second one? Which one will make your Umrah better, the first one or the second one? First one worried about food and shopping. Second one worried about, second one is worried about ibadah and knowledge. Good, alhamdulillah. And the best part about, um, alhamdulillah, a male reward, anyone who set up those, um, you can say knowledge booths in Haram, they're amazing. They have books for you in every language possible. They have people standing. You can go and ask them for fatawa. You can go and ask me, I'm not sure what to do. Can you tell me? And they will give you the correct answers. So instead of asking random people here and there who are performing Umrah or Hajj with you, why not go to the booth? They, these booths are for you. And you will, notice, you will notice these booths next to main doors. In Masjid al-Nabawi, uh, sorry, in Masjid al-Nabawi, there is an, there's a library. And amazing sisters are there in sister section, and amazing brothers are there in brother section. And in Masjid al-Haram, in Makkah, 
they are, I think, near Babul Aziz, they're big booths. So you can go there and ask them um, the questions. While we're talking about Masjid al-Nabawi and the library, let me tell you about something so cool. When you go to the library, there are amazing sisters sitting there. If you want to recite Quran and, to them, and just to see that how your recitation is, you know, they're so nice. They even listen to your tajweed, and they even help you there. And they even tell you that, okay, this is something you need to work on. This is something, you know, you're good at. And they will help you with other things as well. Like if you have a fiqhi question, or if you have a question to do with your umrah rites and rituals. So alhamdulillah. So try to find good company. If your company, the one you're in right now, let's say that your group is like all, you know, fun type. There's nothing wrong to be fun type, but you know, Umrah is a place where we should be there for worship, right? So we have, you know, spent out this time to do something good, so might as well do that. So if your company is fun type, let them do whatever they're doing. Give them a reminder nicely. If they don't understand, it's all right. Um, inshallah, maybe next time for them. But for you, save yourself from that. Try to go find these places and make the most of your time while you're there. And there are halaqas as well in Masjid al-Nabawi and Masjid al-Haram, usually after Maghrib or after Asr, inshallah. Perfect, uh, Sister Umm Mohsin, really great to hear that. May Allah make it easy for you. So inshallah, avail all of these amazing opportunities while you're there. So company will make a big difference. Some people, they come back from Umrah and they're like talking about chopping, chopping, chopping. And then you're like, subhanAllah. Not that you're judging them, but you're sad. That why are you, you know, why didn't you go to that exhibition instead? Why did you waste all your time, um, you know, in that mall? Or just doing um, shopping. The lectures, um, Brother Islam or Sister Islam, uh, they're in English, Urdu, um, Malay, Indonesian, all languages, subhanAllah, Arabic as well. So there are timings. So like first day when you go to the masjid, ask someone or go to the library straight uh, for the uh, females. I'm not sure if the male section has a library or not. They should for sure, right? But I, have, I love the library section in the female area. Um, so just, just go to the women area, uh, to the library, ask the ladies there because they work there for eight hours straight. So they know everything. Exactly, we can shop anywhere these days, right? Whatever you can find there in Mecca and Medina, you can easily order online as well. Or just take like, you know, say one day for shopping or maybe one time, like, like after Isha, you can say, okay, every day after Isha, when I'm going back, uh, to the hotel, I'm just gonna grab some dates, I'm gonna gra grab some gifts from my friends or family, that's fine. But don't waste your you know, good hours when you could have done something else besides shopping. You know, you could have done something better for sure. Because subhanAllah, after Isha, there's not much activity in Masajid, Alhamdulillah. So that is actually a good time for Tawaf as well. So instead of shopping, you can do Tawaf too. But of course, shopping is there, and we should buy stuff. There's nothing wrong with it, nothing haram with it, alhamdulillah. And buying gifts is a, you know, it's a good deed as well. But don't indulge 